And we're going to be in Romans 12. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. Uh, we're going to talk about being transformed and changed. Uh, but yeah, amen. Uh, let's pray real quick and then we'll kind of get into what we're talking about here. Uh, so Lord God, as we gather here today in the sanctuaries here at uh, Westport and Weldon and North and, and those who are watching on via of live stream, we just ask Lord God on this day, um, Lord God, as we ask for change, that we're ready to do the things it takes to get it done. We pray that the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost would overshadow this place, the, the same overshadowing power that, uh, that impregnated Mary and, and got men to prophesy and people to the laying on of hands and the, and the gifts, uh, Lord God, recorded in the Bible. We want that overshadowing to baptize us here today. Uh, and take us into glory in 2017. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go ahead and applaud the Lord even though you're seated. And you can look at your neighbor and say you're not at your mama's church. Amen. And that might be the saying for 2017 since it has been for so long. Um, so talking about change, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. And Mike, you can bring me down just a little bit. Somebody said I had an elevated voice in the, in the last... Um, don't turn me off, just turn me down. <laughs> um, we're going to concentrate on change, uh, verses 1 through 10, but in 9 and 10, uh, so this is definitely a note taker, but in 9 and 10 is where we're going to start. We're going to start backwards because it's, it's vital to the message. It says, let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, and outdo one another in showing honor. So there's three key things that we need to do, Lisa, to move the, God's kingdom for. It's to honor one another, love one another, and be genuine to one another. So you can read them with me in verses 10 and 11. Uh, it says... Uh, be genuine in 9, and it says love one another and honor one another uh, in verse 10. So the thing about honoring and loving one another and being genuine. So I told the last couple of services, it's, if there's anything I can't stand, is a phony. Amen. Regardless of where it's at, especially in church. Amen. It, we, we need to be genuine with one another. And if, and if people would start to believe that we're authentic and we truly are, uh, we're, we're no better than anybody. We're just saved. Amen. We're, we're no better. We're not above anybody. We're just saved. Does that, that make sense? We're not, we're not, we're not better. Uh, we, we're, we're saved. We're going to heaven. Um, and we need to honor one another and we need to love one another because all the saints make up the body of Christ. Amen. Um, let me say it like this. So, we're all parts of the body, so if the finger would to be, if my finger would just to be lopped off and I would just continue to bleed uncontrollably, it would affect the rest of my body. If it, if it wasn't tended to, I, I'd end up dying or, or end up dying from infection. That's the same with the body of Christ. There is no unimportant parts in the body of Christ. Can I say that? It, it, nobody's, nobody's ministry is more important than another. All the ministries together make up the body of Christ. Say body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. So uh, I say that because I've been reminded of a person came and told me, if we were talking about surgery one time, and, 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 and sometimes we don't think a small surgery is, 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 is there's any real risk to a, a small surgery or, 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 or minor surgery. Anybody in you know, a minor surgery here? The definition of minor surgery is when it's somebody else's. <laughs> Did you hear me? Can I keep going? So it, it, it's kind of like, well, that, it's, it's ankle surgery. It's this surgery. It's that. All surgeries are very important, and, they're, and they could be very dangerous. And, th and that's the way we need to, we need to approach uh, church that way, too. Um, and and, and when, when we watch the evening news and someone is dying, I've told you this before, that's someone's child. And, and we don't think much of it until it's, then when it's our child, then it's different. If it's our niece, then it's different. If it's if it's your son or it's or it's your your you know whoever your nephew, then it's a big deal. Amen. Well, that's the way God views His body. He views this body as a big deal. So look at your neighbor right now and tell them they're a big deal. Amen. 
So, um, so we we've, we've been doing. We started out the Crown Financial class Wednesday, and if you didn't if you didn't get to be at the Crown Financial class, get in it. Uh, we simulcast out on Wednesday night, and it goes out to North. It goes out to Weldon. Anna's doing a class on Sunday. If you're interested, let me tell you if this piques your interest. If you're uh, interested in getting uh, more physically fit, uh, more spiritually fit, or more financially fit, any of them three things strike a chord with you, you need to sign up for the crown uh, crown class. No strings attached. Uh, it's just going to get you better, and that's my job as a pastor is to help the body of Christ get better. Amen? Uh, so remember to, to love one another, honor one another, uh, and be genuine. Don't be a phony. You can tell your neighbor that too real quick. Don't be phony. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to read, we're going to read 10 verses, and then we're going to go back and chop it up. Um, you know, most people can see through phonies, though. I just, I just wanted to throw that out to you, you know. It, it, and I've told you that. It's just, I always refer, you know, um, wanting to get the straight story with people like a dentist office. I, I've told you this, and I don't know what my obsession is with dentists, but it's, it's almost like, you know, like when you walk in the dentist's office, maybe not your dentist or maybe really not even mine. He may be watching today, but um, <laughs> you go in and, uh, and, and you go to sit down and, and then they act like they're going to somehow comfort you in what they're about ready to do. And the way they comfort you is leaning you back. And, and it, leaning you back just makes you helpless. And, and, or, or vulnerable, and it's, it's, it's so they can work in your teeth. And, and, and when, they, when they tell you that there's going to be some discomfort here, you're, you already know in your mind, dude, th- discomfort's not the word for what you're about ready to do to me. <laughs> Amen? But, but that's the way change is. It, 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 and, and this is about, listen, I don't know, this is the fourth time I've preached this this week and, and, and been talking about it for a while. Change is kind of uncomfortable. You, and, and we all need to know that this, this could be like a dentist office visit, but in order to have healthy gums and healthy teeth and everything, it's something we need to go through. Amen. I'm not going to lay you back in the chair or work on your mouth or anything, but I'm going to work on you spiritually with the Word of God. So it gets uncomfortable at any point. It's just because we're trying to get you to be better. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, and I won't be using pliers either. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By that testing, you will discern what is the will of God, what is as good and acceptable and perfect. So if you want to know the will of God, you can underline that, and I'll tell you what it is. Verse 3, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. And underline, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith If service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, uh, let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, undo one another or outdo one another in showing honor. Go straight back to abhor what is evil. That means hate what is evil. And in order for you to get the good things of God, in order for you to get the good things of God, you have to quit holding on to what you've been holding on to in the past. You have to get rid of that evil. You have to let evil go so God can give you good. Let me say it again. Let go of evil so God can give you good. Some of you guys are holding on to 2016, 2015, 2014, 2013. Some of you guys are holding on to what your mommy and your daddy did. You got a curse on you because you're holding on because you don't want to do family because your mommy and your daddy didn't do family with this family. Or, your, or maybe your grandpa. You have to let go of what is evil 
so God can so you can grab the good things of God say good things of God and if he can bring it to if he can bring it through you he'll bring it to you if he can bring it through you he'll bring it to you but if it stops there that's all you'll ever get so if he's bringing something good to you, what you need to do is pass it off to someone else so they can enjoy it so you can, re so you can receive another good thing from God. But sometimes, not you guys, but other people want to just hold on to stuff and, oh, I'm not letting that go. Or, I'm not letting them in my life or I'm not, I'm not doing that. Well, then God will never bring you anything else because you're holding on and you don't have an open hand or an open heart to receive anything else. Amen. My microphone must not be on, or you'd have said amen to that. So I'll get going on 12.1. It says, I appeal to you, so, so appeal to you, so the Apostle Paul's talking to the church in Rome, so if you were to read this in King James, it would say, I beseech you, NLT means I plead with you, uh, or ESV, he says, I appeal to you. So King James beseech means to urgently. Plead in NLT means emotionally. An appeal to you is a serious request. Any, any way you look at this, Paul's got a serious request to talk to the church in Rome to try to get them straightened out. Amen. We have to agree that this is an urgent request uh, for this body of Christ to change and to be transformed. Same church here today. I'm trying to get you changed and trying to get you transformed. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, uh, to God which is your spiritual worship. You ready? For, everybody ready for change? Good. Two people. I'll preach to two people today. <laughs> you see, sometimes change is, sometimes change is very difficult. We all want change, but we don't want to do. So if, if my body is a mobile temple, I have to make sure that I'm not I'm not dumping anything in God's house that he don't, that he don't want it. You, there's stuff that you, you've told your kids, don't bring that stuff in this house. Don't bring them muddy boots in this house. Don't bring that marijuana in this house. Don't bring that alcohol in this house. Don't bring that stuff in this house. Has anybody said that? Say amen. It's the same thing. God don't want that stuff in his house. And if you're a born-again believer, this is his house. He made you, and he resides in you with the power of the Holy Ghost. So don't be dumping a bunch of trash inside his house. Can I get a witness? Amen. Yeah, well, see, change is tough, isn't it? Um, so he, here's how that looks. Say, give me an example. Well, what, I'll give you an example. So back when I was on the old rock road, I was sitting in my chair like this, and I was studying, uh, and, and, and I looked out my window, and I seen a guy out there, and he was, he, I hope he's not here today, but um, <laughs> he, he was dropping off. A, he, he, at church, you call it dropping off. You call it, you call it it's just dro dropping stuff off. I call it dumping. <laughs> we're going to drop it. You, you, we're going to drop something off at church. So I'm looking out my window, and I look down there at Mr. Mark, and, and, and this guy was pulling up with his truck, and he backed up with it, like to my dumpster, and uh, he, he put a bed and a frame and everything by there, and I walked down, I came down, I said, hey, man, I said, what are you doing? He says, oh, he said, I'm just giving this to the church. I go, oh, are you giving it to the church, huh? <laughs> I said, do you want it? He goes, no, and I go, neither do I, load it back up. That, something like that. So spiritually, spiritually, God doesn't want that stuff in his house is all I'm just trying to say. You know, so God, God wants good things in his house, and, 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 if this is a, and if this is a mobile temple, I want it to function like it should function. Amen? Okay. Uh, uh, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and, and here's this. So uh, do not conform, uh, do not conform to this world. So don't conform to this world. So, uh, you know, it, it, and sometimes we, we don't want to really, like, conform to the world, but we, we get sucked in by it. And, and it could come in the form of a, uh, let's see, uh, it could come in form of like, a, like a, an ice storm. It's, it's, it's good for selling milk and bread, isn't it? And then if I can get you hyped out about it, I can keep you on the TV. But I want, I want to get you hyped up about Jesus so you stay focused in here, not on the ice storm that never happened. Amen? Got a lot of coverage, though, didn't it? 
I, I never seen so much. Can I come up here and say this? I never seen uh, frozen water get so much coverage. Or unfrozen water. Wouldn't you love to have Jesus get that much coverage? Well, hold on for a second. We can get frozen water to get that much coverage, but we got to beg people to come to church. You see, change is, change is pretty weird, isn't it? And, and, and we, we, you know, see, that's the media has done a really, really great job at selling things. Yeah, this, this thing, the, the, the world's coming to an end, and, 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 and we're going to get, we're gonna, here, here's the way they, tell me if this works. We're going to get you real hyped out, and we're going to have somebody stand over an overpass and, and have some cars drive by, and yeah, we, we think it's about ready to happen, and everybody's on, and they go, well, not yet. And do you ever notice when they don't hit it, they hit the weather right, they just kind of keep pushing it forward, and, and when it never happens, they go, whoo, that just barely missed us, and then they get paid for that too. I'll move on. <laughs> so uh, transformed, I titled this Transform to Change. Transform to Change. Uh, transform is a dramatic change. Uh, and, and, and transform actually means to change the structure. Tra change the structure. And we know the only way you can really change the structure in your life or the, or the marrow at your core is to be born again. Say born again. And, and I don't need to go through all the scripture in there. There's uh, probably uh, 35 places in the New Testament where it talks about being born again. So you're, you're born once in your mother's womb, and then in order to go to heaven, you have to be born again. And, that, and that's the whole thing. So you were born with sin, and in order for you to get rid of sin, you have to be born again where Jesus lives inside of you, and that his blood removes the sin so it won't be counted against you on the day of judgment. Amen? And that's good news, and you could applaud there if you felt like it. Okay, um, so, so in verse 2 it says, So we're going to be, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern uh, what is the will of God. So a lot of people really want to know what the will of God is, and the will of God is, is that none should perish. So turn with me into 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And uh, I had a couple of people come up to me and go, man, that was awesome that you covered that. You didn't cover that the night before. And I don't really try to cover everything. I just try to cover what God tells me to cover. First Timothy, we're going to read 2, 1 through 4. It says, First Timothy 2, 1 through 4. It says, first of all, then I urge that supplication and prayers and intercession and thanksgiving be made for what? For, for all people. Because all people are special in the kingdom of God. For kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in what way? In every way. I want to be, listen to this, I want to be changed in every way. I don't want to think like my way is the best way. God's way is the best way. And I need to get on board with that sanctification process. It, and, and it continues. So I want to be better. I woke up and I asked God, I said, I want to be better today than I was yesterday. Let me say it over here where you guys will say amen. I want to be better. I want to be better today than I was yesterday. Amen. Thank you. I'll preach over here. But here, the goal, and it seems so radical. You go, how could I be better? I was so great yesterday. Your elbow and your husband right now. Uh, this is verse 3. It says, this is good and it pleases and it's pleasing in the sight of God, uh, our Savior. Watch this class. So here it is in, 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 in verse 4. Here's God's will. Who desires that all people be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. So, and you also can read this in, in 2 Peter 3, 9. And, and you find out our, our true uh, act of worship is to go out and tell people about the gospel message. And we read that in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Uh, so he doesn't want people to go to hell. Will people go to hell? Absolutely, because they'll refuse uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. Why do they do that? Because of pride. It's the same thing that kicked the devil out of heaven was his pride. His pride got too big. And, and the problem with pride is, is when you think you do it all, you raised your money and you did this, then God doesn't get any glory. And when God doesn't get any glory, he's no more Lord of your life. You become Lord, you become your own God. 
But let me tell you something. When you go to your refrigerator today and open it up, go, thank the Lord, he gave me everything in here. And you open up the freezer, you say, thank the Lord, he gave me everything here. Thank the Lord, he gave me my truck. Thank the Lord, he gave me my gas. Thank the Lord, he gave me my health. He gave me my children. He gave me this church. He gave me everything that I see. Thank God that I'm breathing air that he gave me. He's giving you the air that you're breathing right now. Can I get a witness? Don't walk around here and act like it's yours. It's his. Woo, praise God. Well, well, now I'm going to play that back. That sounded pretty good. I'm going to have to go online and watch that. Can we keep going in verse? I ain't even got, I, are we going to get all this in one service? It might have to be a, a continuation. Verse 3 says, for by grace given to me, I say to everyone not to, so here we go. Uh, one among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. King James Version, Pastor Jim says, high-minded. Back when I was in high school, we called them conceited. Remember that word was popular? Yeah, everybody was conceited back then. You just whipped it on them. You're conceited. I don't even know if they use that word anymore. But. So this is what that means. It says, don't be conceited, because I just told you, class, because when you're conceited, God doesn't get any glory. You're so conceited, oh, he's, you know, whatever, high horse. Thank you. Well, God can knock you off it, but that's another story. So he says, think with sober judgment. And that's not just intoxicated by alcohol. It's intoxicated with anything. Think with sober judgment. Don't let something cloud your mind so bad that God's not first thing in your life. Don't, be so, don't let your mind get so clouded with other things that, that you keep God second or third down the line. If we're going to have a change in our life, God is going to have to bring it. We want to get better physically, financially, and spiritually in 2017. Amen. Now, I'm going to talk about the measure here real quick. So he says, uh, so think about it with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. You say, what's a measure? A measure is an amount. Now, it, it may not have took uh, a whole lot of uh, a measure of faith, to get somebody saved, but this guy over here, it might have took a big measure to get this guy saved. He might have really, he might have really need to have God do something in his life for, uh, you know, for this to happen. And God will do whatever it takes to get his people saved. Amen? And some will reject the faith, but that's up to them because their, their free will uh, gets in the way sometimes. Free will is a great thing, but it's bad when you decide not to choose Jesus as Lord and Savior. Well... And, 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 and you know what? To receive Jesus, all it takes is a mustard seed. That's what it talks about in Matthew 17, 20. If you've got a mustard seed of faith, you can be saved. Amen? I told you about the lady that received Jesus Christ uh, before she died. I think she was about 80 years old. I went to minister to her in the hospital. I've told you the story before. She sat, uh, I went in. She, she wasn't born again. She knew she wasn't born again. I can't remember her name. I said, do you just have a mustard seed of faith about Jesus Christ? She says, yeah, I got that much. I said, you can receive Jesus then. I said, just ask him to come into your life. She died two days later after that. So all it takes is a mustard seed, and God can work with it. But you'll have to move first. He already moved. I said, you'll have to move first. He already moved. I said, you'll have to move first. He already moved. You know, some people, not you guys, but other people will stand there tapping their foot, and they'll, they'll, they'll make conditions with God. Yeah, if you give me a new Mercedes out in my driveway, I'll know you're real. Don't wait on that. <laughs> Don't test God. I'll just move on. Um, so turn with me into, it says, a measure of faith that God has assigned. Uh, turn with me into uh, Hebrews 10.38. And this will kind of explain how the kingdom of God actually works down here on planet Earth. It says, it says, but, it says, but my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So God, God doesn't want you to shrink back in your faith. He wants you to grow in your faith. He says, the righteous shall live by faith. That should be your diet as a Christian to live on faith. Of course you can't see it. If you could see it, it wouldn't be faith. The righteous people live by faith. And then Hebrews eleven six 6 says, it's impossible to please God without faith. 
So you get your faith to grow the same way you do working out. Everybody, God gives everybody a body. What you do with it is up to you. If you don't want to work out, you don't want to exercise, then you develop atrophy. Same with faith. If God's asked you to do something, step out. He'll be there. He'll help you with it. And then when you get that accomplished, he'll take you to the next thing. Oh, I've never done that. I've never talked to people. I've never laid hands on people. I've never worked in children's ministry. Well, maybe it's time to start in 2017 to lay claim in faith that we're going to get on board with what God is doing here and in my life. Amen. I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to step out in faith. <laughs> yeah, some people been courting people for a while too. In <laughs> that person that's waiting for that person to ask them to marry them, you need to step out in faith and ask that person, "Are we ever going to get this thing done?" And if they don't have an answer, well, we'll move on. And I don't know who that is. I'm just throwing it out there because God just dropped it in my spirit. You know, sometimes we're, we're waiting for a change, but we're waiting for somebody else to do We're waiting for somebody else to do it for us. It ain't going to happen. It, it's not your mommy's responsibility to wake you up to get you out of bed in the morning. It's not your mommy's responsibility to take care of this, that, and the other. As adults, we all need to grow up, and we need to, we need to walk out this faith. Amen? Sometimes we've been coddling our kids too long. Well, you step out in faith. They'll be all right if you, if, you, if, you, if you send them to the Lord. So here it is, verse 4. It says, as one body we have many members. I talked about that. The members do not all have the same function. And I've told you before, you don't want me playing the piano. So... So we, though, are many in one body in Christ and individual members of one another, having gifts differ according to the grace given to us. What does it say, class? Let us use them. Let us use them. Say that with me. Let us use them. It's time to get off the pine and get in the game. The gospel's an action sport, and he wants the Christians to get in and transform this world. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. He wants you to get off the bench and get in the game. Use it or lose it. Hallelujah. Go ahead and rise up with me. I just got a couple verses, and then we'll... And I'll bring the deacons and the pastors and the ushers down here. So we all have different gifts. And if you don't believe me, the Apostle Paul wrote another book called 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Everybody wanted the same gift. They all wanted to prophesy. They all wanted to speak in tongues. They all wanted to lay hands. And let me tell you something. Nobody has the same gifts. We're all different. But we all serve the same God if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And, and he will help you. Uh, he will help them gifts get better and better over time when you continue to, to step out in faith. Amen. And you're thinking about it, and, and, and maybe, you're, maybe you're going through something right now. And I just, I, I talked, and uh, we can bring the praise team up. I was talking to a lady here, and I'm not going to give her ministry or who she was, but I stayed after Saturday and uh, last night, and I was talking to her. She says, man, she goes, you hit me right between the eyes on that message. She goes, there's a ministry in here, and she was talking in herself that I'm not using that, that could benefit this whole body. And when she uncorks this thing, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help people big time. And let me tell you something, each one of you guys got a gift too. Each one of you guys, I know you guys, everyone here has got a gift that they ain't using. And in 2017, it's, it's time to get in the game. It's time to get in the game. You can applaud, that's good. Here it is, here's, here's the wrap-up, here's, here's the wrap-up coming. He says, having different gifts according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion with your faith. He said, if you got the gift of prophecy, prophesy. If you have service, serve. If you teach, teach. The one who exhorts or uh, encourages, make sure you encourage. The one who contributes in generosity. The one who leads with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy, cheerfulness. So, and, and you could break all of them down, and we're going to end here in 9 and 10. But I thought about them gifts as he, as he lists them, and, and he ends with cheerfulness. 
the way you could get cheerful in your ministry is know that you get to do it and you don't have to do it. Well, hold on for a second. <laughs> because it's going to get done. God's, God's going God's to get it done. It's not, it's not like it stops if you don't want to play. He's got all kinds of people sitting on the bench getting ready to raise their hand. And you say, well, what happens to me? Then, then you just sit there with your nose pressed up against the glass and you watch the, the parade go by. You can go ahead and start, Mr. Mark. So if God's given you this gift and, 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 you're, ready to, and you're ready to start using it in this church or, or maybe you're watching on live stream and you've got another home church or whatever, I'm, I'm going to tell you the, the biggest blessing the most uncomfortable I, thing I've ever done in my life was become a Christian. It's, it's, a, it's the most uncomfortable, hardest thing I've ever done, but it is the most rewarding thing I've ever done. And God is continually molding my character, and he's refining me, and he's shaving off some rough edges so he can, he can use me more and more. And, I, and I, I ask him to continue to use me more and more, God. You can't, you can't start out, hold on for a second. Don't start out 2017 the way you did 2016. Don't drag your 2016 up in 2017. He's giving you one more year to get it right. And if you're interested in, in being blessed physically, financially, spiritually, how about with health? How about what would it be like in 2017 just to have great health? Man, that would be something. Well, you, if, you, if you want to be blessed in these areas, you have to commit something to him. So he's got something to work with. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. So here it is. It, it, as God's trying to, to give you something, you have to let go with whatever, whatever you already got. And, and if you want to be that, that agent of change, you just ask God, just right now, say, use me, God. Just right where you're at. You don't even have to come down to the altar. Right? You, just, you just raise your hand and just say, use me. I'm, I'm ready to be used in 2017. I finally made up my mind. I am ready to be used. And if you hold on for a second, and if you call on me, I'll be ready to go. Let me pray for you real quick. So, Lord, I just want to pray for all those who are, that are out here who are ready to be used. I, I, I can see them. They're out here. They got their hand raised. They want to be used. Lord, it's kind, of a, it's kind of an exciting journey. I'm not sure where you're going to take them or where they're going to serve in this church, but I know it's going to be a, it's going to be a heck of a ride. Bless them, Lord God, in this. And, Lord God, as we, as we get together here and, and work on blessing you, Lord God, I pray that you, you bless our tithes and our offerings today, Lord God, that as we release our, 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 our offering to you, Lord God, that you'll you'll bring us another one that we can present to you. And let us not be fearful of our finances or, or fearful of our health or fearful of, uh, or, or of the media. We know that you're going to take care of us. You promised that in Matthew 6. So bless it and multiply the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you applaud the Lord one more time? Now let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Have you received the free gift of salvation that only Jesus can give? If, if you've received Jesus as Lord and Savior, just raise your hand. You're just, you're just letting him know, the devil know, everybody in the congregation, I've been saved. Okay, and I don't know who's raised their hand, but you can put it down now. If you haven't been saved, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ today. So ask him to come into your life. And if there's something you need to lay down at the altar and, and ask God to pick you up in 2017, the altar is ready to receive you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.